Hello everyone and welcome back to the video. Today we're going to be doing a ultimate guide to 2v2. I'm going to be covering everything you need to know to play really good Age of Empires 2 in 2v2 formats across all maps and all kind of play styles. I'm going to give you all the tools right here, right now in this video. And if this video does well, I'm going to be doing the guides for 3v3 and 4v4 as well. Guys, this is highly requested videos over the course of two, three years that I've been making content. And I'm very happy to be presenting this video to you guys today with some quality edits. Hopefully, shout out to my editor. Uh, before I get started though, guys, make sure to check me out on Twitch and Discord, link in the description. Twitch for live streams, Discord for a nice place to hang out and build orders for free. So yeah, without further ado, let's hop into it with the ultimate guide to 2v2s. All right guys, we're gonna have like six segments to this video. The first one is gonna be overall strategy and civ combinations. Then we're looking at early game and communication. Then we have feudal age, castle age and imperial age and what to do in those specific times and then finally we have late game walling and trade and some ideas to end the game in that super late game stage let's hop into it with the first category or first segment which is overall strategy and civ combinations now guys i'm not gonna lie to you it often depends on which map you're playing but it's actually very simple for 2v2 if you're playing a land map anything that's open arabia land madness whatever map that resembles arabia which is just an open land map you definitely want to use this combination one archer civ one cap civ so some examples britons mines ethiopians for the archer civ and for the cav civ you go with like franks khmer bulgarians anything that can be really strong economically and field really good knights throughout the game and the reason for this is because knights and crossbows are the best composition you can have at all points of the game at early game it's scouts and archers the strongest feudal age combination in castle age it's crossbow and knights which is the strongest castle age combination keeping in mind how cheap those units are and how easy to field them it is and in late game you have arbalest and paladin which is very very strong combination and those two units they cover each other's weaknesses knights are weak to helps archers are there to cover it so your opponent cannot go for any counter units because if they do camels your archers are there to cover it if they go skirms your knights are there to cover it so as you guys can see that knight and archer combination is flawless it's absolutely perfect and it's definitely the strategy you want to stick to if you're playing meta now there is times you can deviate and try some other things but keep in mind if you are deviating you better think it through and you better try to practice against knight and archer because that's basically the bread and butter when it comes to 2v2s on other maps of course other combinations are going to be very much viable but for land maps that's going to be your main idea but for other maps try to follow similar concepts make sure that whatever strategy you try to employ make sure that you're covering each other's weaknesses uh, one guy plays something and the other guy plays something to complement it and not try to do two sieves that do the same thing. That's gonna be very, very easy to counter. All right, guys, next step, I'm gonna be talking about the early game and communication. It's very important to be coordinated in a 2v2 because you don't want it to turn into two 1v1s because yes, that might work for a couple games. I've won games like that as well. It's actually gonna be very easy to punish if you're up against good players that will group up and attack one of you before the other one is able to find any counter damage. And 2v2 is all about momentum and tempo because if one team gets the lead, you can't just ignore their army. They can break through walls easily with scouts and archers or knights and crossbows and castle. You cannot ignore their army and you cannot counter it if you're one player best bet to defend is to group up yourself and try to defend and actually fight their army head-on with your own army so for early game communication guys this starts from dark age or even before you need to identify exactly what the opponent strategy is going to be oftentimes it's going to be very similar to yours if it's going to be a meta game but if they're trying something different make sure you identify that from the start because it changes how you play the game the next thing you have to figure out is who is playing against who now let's assume it's going to be archer and knight on both teams so let's say britons and franks just to simplify it on both teams it's a complete mirror match but it's not necessarily a mirror match right because if one side has archer civ you could be playing archer civ versus cav civ and then the other side is going to be archer versus cav as well so in a way it's mirrored but it's not quite that mirror match that you think of in a 1v1 where you both have the same units here you have different units it's archer on one side and his opponent will be the knight player so it's very important early game to figure out who you're playing against because that changes how you want to go about things now i'm going to give you the solution to play in those situations if you're the archer player versus the knight player what you want to do is mix in a spear with your first group of archers before moving out if you want to put early pressure if not you can cut out on the spear but then play defensively and make sure you're fully walled before moving out to help your ally or to put pressure if you want to move out make sure you're making a spear forward or a spear at home while you wall it's very important if you're the cavalry player against the archer player, what you want to do is look to fully wire your map. But while you do that, make sure you're attacking first with the scouts. Your unit comes out much faster and it has more mobility. You should be putting the pressure 100%. But make sure they're not doing men at arms or drush to potentially delay you or to prevent you from getting that tempo. So if they're not doing that, you get the tempo. If they're doing that, focus on defending and walling up or calling your archer player to come help you clear up the men at arms and play from there. 
Now, if it's archer versus archer, I recommend you don't do any mana arm or drush. It's a really bad idea. Go straight archers. Most of the time, it's going to be the best strategy because straight archers counters mana arms even in 1v1. So it's the same concept in team games. Do not do mana arms if you're up against archer player and you're the archer player. Go straight archers and play it from there while walling up your base. All right, in the last scenario, it's cavalry versus cavalry. In this one, and this, I'm very experienced in this situation, it really comes down to who wants to attack and who wants to defend. It often comes down to who goes up to feudal age faster, that's the guy who's attacking, and the other guy just needs to defend. You could try to counterattack, but that reads a lot of risks. In cavalry mirrors, you either wanna mass up your scouts and just race to fully wall your base. Fully walling is really important because that lets you just leave with your scouts and you don't have to worry about anything breaking your walls until the archer player, the opposing archer player, can come attack you as well. So my best recommendation is try to go up as fast as possible, put some pressure with your scouts. If you can't, no problem, sit home and wall up. If you can, you attack for a little bit with your scouts and then you use that pressure while you're attacking to wall up your base. Then you're completely safe at home and you're putting the pressure so your opponent now has to defend. If he tries to counter attack, then it's just a skill game, but you should have the tempo because you're up faster. All right guys, so that's all it is with early game and communication. And I gave you guys the setup and the strategy that you need to have going into this game and the kind of mindset you need to have based on the situation, based on who you're against and based on what your opposing strategy is gonna be. Like I said, the last thing I'll say about this is if they're doing something different based on the civs, identify it and adapt. I can't prepare you for all those situations, but I will tell you if you're on knights and archers, that's the strongest setup. Just find a way to stop whatever they're doing, the anti-meta stuff that they're doing, and you should be golden for the mid and late game. All right, moving on now to the Feudal Age. Feudal Age is an extremely crucial part in 2v2 because in 1v1, it's often very easy to defend against Feudal Rushes because it's just one person and you can always do counter units. But in 2v2, you actually don't have options for counter units in most cases. I'll tell you why. If my opponent is going archers and he for some reason is a better player, I can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna go skirms to counter him because then the scout player comes and kills my skirms and then we're up against archers and scouts and we've got no answer to it whatsoever. So counter units don't really exist in 2v2s. So how should you play Feudal in that situation? What should you do? if you're the guy who's winning or if you're the guy who's losing. Well, it's actually quite simple and your best strategy in Feudal Age is to group up with your ally. So let's assume that you're fully walled your base. There's no crazy damage in that early game. What you should do is look to identify if you're the team that needs to attack or if you're the team that needs to defend. There's a few factors that decides this, but for the most part, it just depends on who gets the tempo from the early game. Because in the early game, something's gonna happen. Something's gonna change. Either one guy's gonna be kept open. Either one guy's gonna have a slightly more archers. They might have a faster sieve like Ethiopians versus I don't know, something like Mines, Ethiopians will be a little bit stronger in early feudal, so keep that in mind. And think of who is the attacker and who's the defender. If you're on defense, you have a very simple job, but a very delicate job, because one mess up and you could lose the game. So if you're on defense, what you want to do is keep your archers behind your walls or on a hill close by, just outside your walls, so that you can't get collapsed on. You can't get 2v1 out of nowhere. Then identify where your opponent is going to attack you and who they're going to attack, because chances are they will try to look to put pressure if they're playing a good game. As soon as you spot the army, try to group up with your teammates. So if your archer player, group up with your scout player but make sure you're doing it in a way that you don't get picked off before you meet up. Once you meet up, you look to try to take a fight. If they're on your walls, you have defender's advantage. This is why defense is good. If they're on your walls trying to break in, you will have more units because you reinforce faster. So your scout comes out of your stable and he's ready to fight. Their scout comes out of their stable and he's got to walk all that way to join his army. That's what defender's advantage is and that's what we use when we're on defense to win these fights and prevent them from breaking in. So like I said, if you're on defense, you just wait to group up, don't get picked off 1v2, and then as soon as you spot where their army is and identify their plan, you group up with your teammates and you look to take a fight with defender's advantage. Try to micro and make sure you're taking good fights, of course. All that applies like in any other game. If you're the attacker for these 2v2s, my best recommendation is to find the guy who's the most exposed. And usually this is going to be the calf player because if you try to attack the archer player, he can easily sit behind walls and prevent you from breaking in. The calf player has no such luxury. He either has to take the fight or back up and allow you to potentially break in. So my best advice is if they're fully walled, attack the calf player almost every single time. If they're open, attack the guy who's open. That's pretty straightforward. When attacking, make sure to keep the archers alive at all costs. You don't want to lose archers for free. That's the main DPS unit that you have in this 2v2 combination. Scouts. If you lose them, that's fine. You can just back up. In Cast Age, you make knights anyways. But if you start losing archers, you're going to lose that ball of crossbows that you have in Cast Age, and that's the main unit. That's the unit we want to keep alive. So when you're attacking, try to keep your archers alive. And if there's a bad fight, you run away from it. The scouts can tank a little bit, let the archers run, and then you're good to go and back up. If it's a good fight, use the archers to put pressure. Scouts go, go in. You take the fight. It's all good. If the scouts die, it's totally fine. We don't care about scouts. We just want to keep the archers alive. And that's what dictates who wins the fight in these early feudal age. Who keeps the tempo alive with the archers and who can find damage done with the early military under economy. 
Fantastic. So that's Feudal Age covered. Now we're moving on to Castle Age. Castle Age, it's really easy to play in terms of what you need to do, but it's really hard to execute because there's a lot going on. Now in Castle Age, there's a few strategies that you need to be aware of. So the first strategy is for the archer player. There's three options, all in, balance, eco, and military, and fast and Feudal Age, which is less economy, but it's not quite all in. So with the first one, the all in is based around wanting to end the game in Castle Age and wanting to take game ending fights right then and there. You want to get thumb ring and ballistics. You only do this strategy if your Civ has Thumb Ring or like something going for it in early Castle Age. So you get Thumb Ring and Ballistics and you don't make another Town Center until you have those upgrades and you can even go up to three ranges and not just the standard two. That's the first strategy for the Archer player. The second strategy is to balance it. You get ballistics right away. It's the most important upgrade. You have to get ballistics right away if you want to play optimal 2v2 in 99.9% .9 of cases, or let's say 99% of cases. You want to get ballistics right away and then you go up to three TCs after ballistics, no problem. And the third strategy is the fast Imperial. You once again get ballistics, but then you either stay on one TC and just add more farms to try to get up to Imperial Age quickly. You don't really want to get Thumb Ring because that takes too much food. Or you can add one TC and do a two TC boom into a faster Imperial Age. And the whole reason for that strategy, the third option is to be able to get faster Imp and then push with maybe a forward castle or with the Arbalest Power Spike. This is usually best for civs that have amazing Imperial Ages, like Britons with extra range or Byzantine with cheaper Imperial Age, something like that that gets them a bonus. Otherwise, it's going to be pretty slow. So keep that third option for only when it's applicable. That's the three strategies that you want to go with with the Archer player. Those are so repeatable. Just figure out which one you want to do in each game and then execute it as best as you can. It's going to vary from game to game depending on whether you take damage early or whatnot, but those are generally your three best options and it's up to you to identify which one you want to do. Usually more than one is correct for any game. Just make sure you're committing to the strategy you do and you don't try to like mix and match because then that's where the mistakes come. All right, now for the calf player. Now the calf player, similar to the archer player, has a few options. So you have two options, I would say. The first one is all in right away and you go three stables, you don't add town centers, you add more farms and you get more on gold and you go three stable plus two knights and you try to end the game as fast as you can. The second option is the more balanced option. And this is basically, you go for plus two right away or as fast as you can. And then you add two town centers to go on a three TC boom. And then you go with a lot of knights as soon as you can afford them, a lot of villagers when you can afford them, or that should take priority more villagers than knights. And then you work your way up to Imperial Age. And then you either go like more knights in late Castle Age, or you go up to Imperial Age. That just depends on the game, of course. But that's the more balanced approach. And that's gonna be the approach that you take in most of your games as the calf player. You wanna go two stables plus two knights, try to group up with your archer player and make plays and then back home you're also 3TC booming. So that's the strategy for each individual player and as far as the team play it's very simple and it's the same as Feudal Age. You either try to attack or you try to defend. If you defend you have the defender's advantage. If you're attacking you usually have like a hill or you have like the element of surprise as your advantages and it all comes down to execution. All right guys so that's the Castle Age covered pretty much everything you need to know in that main scenario. If there's other scenarios that come up then definitely feel free to adapt and use some of the same concepts that I've talked about in some of the previous ages and some of the examples I provided for Castle Age. Make sure that you're working together and only taking fights when it's both of you there against both of the opponent team or try to isolate one of the opposing players and try to 2v1 them in Castle Age. Some of those attacks are very devastating and you can end a lot of your games in Castle Age if played correctly. Make sure you're not underproducing army because team games, army has a lot of value because if one guy stops making army to be a little greedy and you lose one big fight, then both of you will lose your economy, not just one of you. So it you know, ends up really snowballing quite a lot. So make sure, and especially in Castle Age, that you're producing a lot of army. And even if there's different situations that come up, just adapt and try to keep the same good concepts there like working together and keeping a good composition that works well together and covers each other's weaknesses. All right, now we can move on to Imperial Age. Now, Imperial Age is a really, it's a really broad topic and there's a lot of things that could happen because in Imperial Age, that's where like monks become an option. That's where elephant transitions become an option. That's where trebuchets come out. A lot of different siege comes out and it's really hard for me to encapsulate all this in one guide. But the main thing I will say for Imperial Age is to start trade early as the best piece of advice you can have. My recommendation, I've heard it from other top players as well, is you start trade or you start getting the markets in the corner as soon as you click up to Imperial Age or as soon as you reach Imperial Age. Those are the two windows. Now, let's talk about the difference between them. If you go, as soon as you click Imperial Age, you're gonna have less of a all-in power spike because you're gonna be starting trade earlier, but you have a much more steady flow of gold. Remember, trade gets you infinite gold if you protect your trade line in the team game. And so you have a much more steady income of gold and you don't find that period where you're out of gold if you start it early. If you go for the late trade, which is starting it after clicking Imperial Age, you're gonna have one big power spike where you might be stronger than your opponent who's starting it early because you're not investing that gold and wood onto trade cards. You're not getting the market as early. So your economy will 
will be stronger. However, that window is really hard to take advantage of. So I'd recommend as a general rule, get trades started early. It's gonna be much better for most of your games. Now you might be wondering, well, I got the trade started, but it's so easy for my opponents to come in and snipe my trade and it's all for nothing. Well, that's when it comes in the concept of map control and securing the trade. So the idea here is you wanna both you and your teammates expand as you get to Imperial Age with outposts first and then walls and castles will come down right after and shortly after to secure your trade routes. The ideal strategy in Imperial Age is for you to go for your respective compositions. So Cav goes Cav, Paladin, all that stuff. The Archer player goes like Arblast. You mix in some Siege if needed. Bomber Cannons for the Arblast player is usually good. Trebuchets if needed for the Cav player. If you want to make any transition, it's usually in late Imp, so don't think about it in early Imp. And then you want to secure your map with walls and castles. In my opinion, both players should be stonewalling their sides of the map and connecting their stone walls in the middle to wall the entire map, one side to the other side with stone and get fortified walled if you can as well. If you have any spare castles, you want to put those up in your trade routes and between your players to cover all the spaces that the opposing players can run in and just like have a free reign of sniping your trade. You don't want to let that happen. So again, you connect your walls with stone and you also want to get castles up in your trade to protect your trade cards and that's how you want to set up the late game. As far as transitions go, transitions can be a really good way to help gain advantage and help end the game because sometimes our blessed and paladin, it's going to be a clash. No one's going to win. No one's going to be favored. So some popular transition is like unique units like Mangadai. It's a good time to start thinking of it in early to late imp. And then some transitions like let's say battle elephants for Khmer. Well, that can be really good when your opponent starts to get paladin, you're on cavalier, you get trade set up and then you switch to elephants when you have a big economy and trade set up and you know, you have the wall set up so you can't get raided. Boom, elephants, perfect transition. That's how you should be thinking of it, guys. You can't just skip to your transition in early imp. You have to set up your trade first and then transition because then you have in theory infinite gold or a lot of gold to work with and a safe income because you have those walls set up. Really important to not make the transition too early or else you're screwed. It's happened to me plenty of times. I can tell you from firsthand experience. All right, the last topic I want to talk about is super late game walling and trade. I already told you guys to wall the trade, but how you want to push in to your opponent's trade now is as such. You want to make space on the map by getting castles on the hill and walling up more. Like you have your initial layer of wall. If you take more space, redo more walls after that. Like build your stone walls as you advance. A lot of people are too lazy to do this, but stone is a really cheap resource in team game because you're trading, you have a lot of gold. You can easily buy a lot of stone. You can take the middle mines that have a lot of stone. So push with castles, take ground if you're the aggressor and then wall more as you take more ground to really prevent your opponent from breaking free of the chokehold that you have them in. It's all about a slow push towards the trade. And as soon as they eventually start losing the trade cards, they're going to fall apart. But do that in a slow and steady manner. It's your best bet. You're also going to want to delete vills in late game. You don't have enough space for a lot of vills, a lot of army and a lot of trade. So what you want to do is based on the kind of army you have. If you have archers, you don't need any farms, virtually no farms in late game because you're going to be making food and wood units for trade cards, for your military and for your siege. So you need no food except for upgrades. So really cut down your farmers to like five or six farmers. And if you don't want to delete them, just send them to make those forward walls that I'm talking about. Bring up the stone walls. If you lose 40 villagers to get the wall up, it doesn't matter because you want to delete them anyways. So it's totally fine to really cut down your farmers, make more space for trade and military. Super important. And of course, you still want some wood vills, so like 50, 60 vills on wood, totally fine if you're the archer player, that's solid. If you're the calf player, it's slightly different. You need maybe like 25 on wood, maybe like 50 farmers, and that's about it. You don't need to have 80 farms like in 1v1, like for 80 farm hussar spam, just 50, 40 farms is good enough. As long as you can afford to make your paladin, your elephants, whatever it is, you're good. You don't need to float 10k food to have a good late game. Make sure you have a lot of trade as well, and make sure you have a lot of military instead of those extra villagers that are just kind of useless. And that's the big thing I wanted to talk about here. I think I covered a good amount of what 2v2 strategy is at all stages of the game. Let me know if you guys like the format of this video. And like I said, a thousand likes on this video and good feedback from you guys. And I'll make the 3v3 and 4v4 version. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Make sure to drop a like and a comment below what you guys have for feedback for me. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.